I've managed to automate 95% of my client onboarding and fulfillment, as well as remove me from day-to-day -day operations with this exact framework. So in today's video, I'm literally going to be revealing all the curtains, showing you step-by-step -step my full automation sequence, how we're doing everything so you guys can take it and implement it into your company again for free. Now, real quick, I swear I have not seen anyone online do remotely anything close, especially in the SMA world. So if you find value from this type of raw behind the scenes content where I'm literally showing you step-by-step -step what we're doing, make sure to go down below, take two seconds, smash that subscribe button. Honestly, it would mean the world to me, especially as we're very new channel and we're continuing to go upwards. Uh, but without further ado, let's just jump straight into the video here. So this automation starts with a sales call when we actually collect the cash. We're not going to trigger this as long as we don't collect the cash. So we have the sales call, we collect the cash, we then update the properties inside of Go High Level. Uh, we have a few custom properties built out. One is called offers where we're just tagging it. So if we have multiple different offers, we'll list offer one, offer two, offer three, and that way we can select what offer that client chose. And then the second thing that we do is also input cash collected. And then we also input the monthly recurring revenue or the package. If you're selling packages or monthly recurring revenue price, we update those properties inside. And then we go ahead and we move them to the deal one pipeline. Now this acts as a trigger. And the first thing that we are doing is sending it down to this automation here where we are looking for the offer via tag filter. Uh, and then we will fully automate the entire proposal through PandaDoc. So I'll actually show you what that looks like. So like I said, the first thing that we're doing is the opportunity status changed to one. So when that happens, uh, we are going and we are looking for the offer. If it's offer one, we're going to do this automation. If it's offer two, we're going to do this automation. Uh, now, these are honestly really simple. I just renamed them so I know exactly what's happening. But this is a webhook step. If you hit new, you can search for webhook. Uh, so right here, you're hitting that webhook. And then the way that works is you can now post a URL. So if I jump over into Zapier, the first trigger is going to be catch hook in webhooks by Zapier. And then it's going to give you this URL. You will take this URL. You will copy it. You will come back here. You'll paste it. You'll hit save action. And now when this automation happens, we're going to send that to then trigger this automation to start. All of the information passes through, name, email, phone number, all the custom fields as well that I said that we've mentioned. That way when we're actually sending the PandaDoc proposal, it'll be fully automated, fully documented with the name, email, phone number. Uh, we're actually selecting a template within PandaDoc, so all the terms and conditions are there, absolutely everything. We're also inputting the monthly recurring revenue because of one of the custom fields, and we're sending that out to them so they can sign. So that fully happens within an instant. We're not doing any of that. Happens 100% without fail automatically every single time. So that's the first set of automations is once we actually move them to one and then they get marked as one, um, we are going and we're sending them the proposals inside of PandaDoc. And then if you have honestly like 10 different offers, you can do the same different thing. Uh, it's just instead of having offer one, two, you're going to add more and more and more. So that way you're looking for whatever offer it was and then sending them to a different webhook and a different automation. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as well is that this is one automation and this would be a second automation. So if you had a different offer, you would have to create a brand new automation. I would name it like offer two or whatever you name the offer. And then again, same concept here. So what we're going to do is continue. So once we move them there, we are then sending them an email with their onboarding form. So that is this, we call that step one, set up your account. Uh, where, hey, welcome to the team. The first step of your account, you can either click on the following link. We have a funnel. So we built a funnel inside of Go High Level with a survey. So they go through that survey inside of Go High Level on that funnel. So we're just literally inputting that link there. And then that way they can go ahead and submit it. Nice, easy done. I'm not having to send any of that. No, our team is having to send any of that either. Now, this email onboarding form is also a trigger. So when they actually submit it, we're going to do two extra things. So coming back into our Go High Level, we have another onboarding flow where you see the trigger is survey submitted. Uh, the next thing we are doing is we are going to Zapier and we're sending things to our Notion onboarding forms and we're creating a Notion project. Uh, so coming back here again, once this gets triggered, we are sending the form submission to a Notion database. So if I show you this Notion database, this is just a test account, but they'll go in, you'll literally input their entire onboarding form. 
a name, email, phone number, login, area code, market availability. If you guys are booking sales calls for them, you know, what are their sales call availability, logos, reviews, websites, YouTube, uh, pretty much anything you need, you'll create custom and then you'll just port that over here. And then the second thing that we are doing is we're creating an onboarding projects that come pre-populated with step-by-steps, SOPs, tasks, videos, documentation, and everything. So that is in this one here, the same webhook. So if I show you that, again, the catch hooks in webhooks by Zapier. Like I said, the first thing we're doing is we're actually creating that database item inside of Notion in our onboarding form. And then the second thing that we're doing is we're creating a onboarding project. So this is honestly where a lot of the magic happens. So this automatically gets fully created. Um, you would name it, you would name it with the offer or whatever you guys are doing. And then if you scroll down, you would have all of your project tasks fully done in here. So let's assume that, you know, you want to do the onboarding call as a task. You would then open this onboarding call and then you would literally have absolutely everything step by step that needs to happen, uh, how to get access to their Facebook, connecting the page to the Go High Level software, um, setting up like literally everything that we are doing, we fully automate in here. We also drop them NPS onboarding links, that way they can review and give us some reviews on how the onboarding was, um, after the call, what to do. So everything's fully documented. Once everything's ready, this is how we go ahead and we make sure just reviewing things. So make sure that everything on the Facebook ads are set up properly, the targeting ad, creative ad copy form. We're also looking at the Facebook leads, making sure that they're actually integrated properly with Go High Level. We go to this link, do that, check Go High Level funnels, make sure the calendars are visible, imagery is good, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll drop our clients a message inside of Slack. So as you can see, like the entire onboarding project is fully documented, the project gets created fully automated, and that way our team can start on it ASAP. So once that is done, the next step is we are sending it and notifying our client onboarding Slack channel. So if I jump back to our Xavier here, you see we've got the webhook, we've created the onboarding form, we've created the onboarding project, and then we are sending a private message inside of Slack. So this specifically, we have a group inside of our Slack called Client Onboarding. So when this happens, we will send a message in Slack. It'll say, hey, um, Joe Dirt just completed onboarding form. Here's the onboarding form link. We're then going to take the link that was created from this step and paste it in there. And then it'll also say, here is the onboarding project to get started on it ASAP. So we'll take the link from here and then we'll put it in step number four. So that way they actually have the onboarding form link and the onboarding project link sent to them fully automated without me or a sales rep or anyone else on the team having to tell them, hey, there's a new client onboarding. It just happens automatically. They can click on it, get started right away. Uh, so as you can see, obviously it's a very minimal effort on my part or anyone else's part. Uh, the onboarding manager knows exactly what has to get done and they start it. So again, to recap, we have now fully automated the proposals. We're sending them the email onboarding form. When they actually submit that form, we are sending that form submission to an Ocean database. We are also creating a client onboarding project with all of the step-by-step -step tasks, SOPs, everything needed to be in there. We are then notifying our client onboarding Slack channel. That way, our team can start onboarding them right away without any questions asked. So then the next step is to actually create the Go High Level sub account. So coming back into our Go High Level, we've now gone through this. The next one, once they submit that onboarding form, is to start creating their Go High Level sub accounts. Now, if you guys have never heard of something called Pavly, I actually have a sweet link that I can drop down below, but this is Pavly. So we're sending a webhook to Pavly. Again, step one, the exact same. We're catching that webhook, and then we can start doing a few other things. First thing we're doing, creating the account. So you see here, create location inside of Go High Level. Second thing we're doing is we're creating a user inside of Go High Level. We then have some text formatting so we can create a Slack channel automatically inside Slack. We then invite all the users to this channel as well, including me, the rest of my team, and the client. And then we are also sending a message inside of Slack with their login details and just setting some more expectations. So jumping back here, again, create Go High Level sub account. By the way, we preload snapshots on this. So literally AI booking bot automations, settings, funnels, and landing pages 
calendars and calendar settings fully populated with images like everything that needs to be in there is in there that way honestly 93 to maybe 96 percent of our clients accounts creation and the back end setup fully automated like we're not doing any of that we're not rebuilding the funnels redoing the calendar boom happens within an instant fully ready for them up next like i said we create a new user inside of that sub account specifically filling up their username, their password, and all of the rest of their personal information from their go high level contact data. Uh, we are creating a client Slack channel, inviting everyone that needs to be in there as well. And then we are sending their login information to that. So this is what we auto send. It says, hey name, welcome aboard to keep things off. Drop your login details to your new software. You can log in here. So you just put your go high level login link. Your login email is the email that they put. And then your login password is uh, so for us, we use first name and then we put a bunch of numbers and a random symbol and then last name. Uh, that way everyone has their login information fully automated and then we're dropping it inside of Slack. Uh, and then from there, our VA spends about an hour to fill the documented onboarding project and SOPs, uh, which again, if I show you here, just going through this and making sure that's all done, they'll spend about an hour doing that. And then they'll go ahead, they'll create a fulfillment project very similar to the onboarding. It's just we're not automating that. This is going to be done manually. We're going to create the fulfillment project with the tasks, the due dates, fully trackable, etc. I can actually give you a sneak peek into what that looks like for us. So we have our client fulfillment tracking. We'll have all of the tasks that have to get done. We will add due dates to them. That way we can track exactly what's been happening, what has happened, what hasn't happened and basically just streamline the actual fulfillment, making sure everything's getting done when it needs to. On top of that, we're also recording client meetings. So any sort of one-on-one -on -one client check-ins or onboardings or anything that happens, that we'll actually go ahead and we'll post inside of here. And then if you were to open it, you'd have that Loom link in there as well. And then what's really cool is we can actually standardize this. So we go over progress and review. We go over obstacles, opportunities. And we also go over customer wins. This is a huge one because then you can actually screen share, grab customer wins, add them to your funnels, add them to your case studies, your proof. Uh, it's much easier and much, much nicer to do it this way rather than asking a thousand clients to you know record a selfie video. Uh, it's just you'll have way more customer wins and way more moments that you can grab put on a funnel doing it this way so list all the customer wins appreciations etc a feedback what else can we do this is going to be super important like make sure that your customer success reps or your client success reps are drilled and dialing down for feedback like hey mr prospect we want to know exactly what's working what's not working what can we do better like please don't shy away we want to make this as good for you as possible um, and the action steps and then a summary. So we have this little AI that'll start auto-populating a summary with the key points, the action steps. That way the manager can come in and review this and see what was talked about and see just at a quick glance, everything that happened on that call. And then now once the fulfillment project has happened, we've had the due dates, everything, um, then yeah, our client success rep will start going to fulfill the project. On average, we're seeing about an hour to maybe an hour and a half per week per client. Uh, that's just looking at you know meta ads we've also started adding other types of ads but just looking at the ads uh, once you're as templated as we are honestly there's not a whole lot of that's going to happen just making sure you're in kpi refreshing images maybe refreshing funnel refreshing offer every now and then uh, but really it's just the management of like making sure we're in kpi again we're super dialed in on the back end so we know exactly what's going to work which is much easier for us but about an hour to an hour and a half a week of just managing the ads plus client communication. So they're going to check in on Slack about every two days with our clients. And then once a week, we do a call with them. Uh, so about an hour a week, let's assume your client success rep works 40 hours a week. Let's give them a 10 hour buffer uh, with something like this. They could realistically handle at least 30 accounts, fully streamlined, super automated, which ultimately allows you to be super hands off. And that, my friends, is just a small glimpse into the back end systems and structures that we built out. But as you can see, super key to streamline everything, super key to remove yourself from day to day operations, just document things, automate things and delegate things. But again, if you found any value in this at all, please do me a huge favor. Take two seconds out of your life. Go down, smash that like and subscribe button because we will be doing much more of these in the future. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.